Welcome back. Wanted to do a video on the technology in uh, Prime's trucks. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, if you have never been in uh, not only a Prime truck, but a lot of these trucks out here, that um, a lot of stuff gets introduced in vehicles like this uh, because, quite simply, we put tons and tons and tons of miles on vehicles. And it's a great platform where, you know, you, you put technology on a vehicle. Um, it performs in, in this marketplace where <clears throat> a company is able to spend money uh, because this is the primary uh, source of, of generating revenue. And then that technology trickles down to consumer automobiles. So there's a lot of things that are on this truck and technology that has been on a lot of semis for a while that you're starting to see and even is starting to become standard equipment on a lot of consumer automobiles. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around so I can show you a couple of the things. Unfortunately, um, a couple of these things you can't see in action because they only function the way they do when the truck is moving and I'm not obviously going to be holding a camera and showing you things uh, but I'll explain what they are um, as I show them uh, but there's a couple pieces of technology in here that are kind of neat there are a couple pieces that are trucking only related um, and I wanted to touch on those as well so uh, we'll turn the camera around and I'll talk about some of the technology that um, you know, my wife mentions this technology to some people and, and they kind of think it's kind of neat. So let's touch on the technology that's in Prime's trucks and a lot of trucks uh, that, that you'll see out on the road. All right, so I'm showing you the uh, inside of the truck. There's a lot more switches um, and buttons and, and whatnot than you would typically see. My truck, uh, the key is turned to the on position. Um, but uh, it is not currently running. But uh, just to show some of the things, and, and we'll start right here. This is, um, it's called the Bendix Wingman Anti-Collision um, Braking System. This is basically forward radar. Um, this piece of technology, there's forward radar, uh, and, as, and that's kind of what is symbolized by the truck and then little waves coming out the front. Um, and I'm not sure, and then the, these are little LED bars um, that show you how close a vehicle is in front of you, and then a little bit of a warning system here that lights up from, you know, um, yellow to orange to red, um, and you can cycle through it. I'm not sure, you know, let's see, if, I don't know, I've actually never done the demo, um, but, so, here, here's... A demo it just kind of shows what it's like so when you're driving so this is good I've never actually done the demo um, it'll show anti-collision braking object detected so it shows you that you've got a vehicle so you know here's your truck and then it'll show that you're 1.5 seconds uh, behind a vehicle so this will then show one so this shows and this if you watch my video that talks about surge, you might hear that beeping in the background. So now the second is two yellow LEDs. So this is you're getting awfully close. So here's your truck and it's getting really close to the next vehicle. So here's, this is you're really close to a vehicle. And this is you're about to run into something. Um, so here's just to tell you what some of these other buttons are for. So that's showing there's something wrong. Um, that's so. At any rate, that's what that system's all about. Um, it's an anti-collision system. It shows following distance. It shows you how far you should be, um, or it shows you how far you are. And if you've taken the the CDL tests, you know about following distance, how many seconds behind. You can also switch this to feet behind as opposed to seconds uh, behind. I currently have it set up for seconds behind. Um, there's another system 
that was on my other truck that was set up as the default for feet behind. I kind of like the seconds behind um, as it is. So uh, that's one piece of technology. This just tells you how much, how hard you're pressing on the brake. So I'm going to skip over some of this stuff and I'm going to skip over all of uh, the gauges because they're pretty basic as well. This, and if I press the weight button, you're not going to get very much out of it. This tells you how much weight is on the fifth wheel basically um and there's nothing on the fifth wheel so this is just the weight of the tractor with no trailer because i'm i'm currently bobtail um but it's basically it's called the right way um gauge and you know we could go into the diagnostics of that system but there's no real point basically uh when you're loading or unloading you can track how much weight is on your drive tires um, and if you've done the information there you know you cannot have more than 34,000 pounds on your drive tires um, so you know an empty trailer is going to be for me between 12 and 13 thousand pounds um, full trailer is going to be up to 34,000 pounds so when I'm loading or unloading um, if I have 34,000, I know when it gets down to 12 or 13,000 pounds, I'm close to empty. Um, if I latch a trailer, it'll be down to 7,200. This is, um, I've shown these two switches before. This is for the uh, power takeoff. That's all that is. This is for the tank heater. I've shown those before, so those aren't necessarily technology, quote unquote. Um, skip over my messy cubby. This is the Duran tire inflation system and this you see on a lot of vehicles but it'll show you how much pressure there is in my right side um, steer tire I have 103 psi uh, left side is 104 99 psi in the uh, front right drive tire front left is 99 um, back right 91 uh, back left is 99 so this and it's set up you're supposed to have 110 PSI in your two steer tires. 110 PSI, 100 PSI in your drive tires. So uh, I do know that this one's just a tad low. Um, it is a little cool today. Uh, we're about 27 degrees right now. So that explains to some extent, but I should put some air in that tire. These will give you an alert when you're about 10 PSI off. So if this drops below 90, um, I will get an audible warning on that one. A um, couple other pieces of technology up here in the dash, and we're going to start on the right. That is a lane deviation camera. Lane deviation camera is pretty simple. It's another uh, piece of technology from Bendix. Uh, it's a camera that faces forward, and it keeps an eye on the lines, either the dash white lines or the uh, solid white or solid yellow line. And if you drift over the line, you are going to get an audible tone. And I can actually make that noise for you by turning the uh, truck off and then turning it back on because it'll run through the diagnostics and play those. And it's designed to sound a little bit just like that. It sound like the rumble strip. So if you drift over the line while you're maybe dozing off, it gives you an audible warning that you're dozing off. Um, that system, there is a switch right there, and you can temporarily disable that, um, but you don't want to disable that all the time. The reason you would temporarily disable that if you're going through a construction zone and they are multiple lines, or sometimes there would be glare, and maybe there's a line um, of tar and the light bounces off the tar. So that's one reason you would disable that. It would disable that for 15 minutes. Um, you can't disable that too often. Otherwise, you will uh, get a notification from Prime saying, why are you disabling the system? This is a safety uh, situation and you shouldn't be disabling it. Uh, next to these, we've got two. We've got uh, an easy pass and a pre-pass. And I'm going to actually flip the uh, camera back around and I'll talk about what those two devices are for. Um, the final one is the best pass. And I'll talk about what uh, those three 
pieces of technology uh, are for um, coming up. But these, everything I've shown you is standard equipment on a prime truck. Um, final thing, just I do have uh, Sirius XM. Uh, all of the trucks come with Sirius XM, but you do have to pay for a subscription. But I'll come back, talk about pre-pass and easy pass, uh, as well as best pass in just a moment. All right, so to talk about the uh, final three pieces of technology, two of them are more or less the uh, the same thing. Uh, the Easy Pass and the Best Pass system are uh, toll systems. They are there to pay your tolls, so that if there is any toll road in this country, and Easy Pass takes care of certain tolls and, and most of them are in the northeast um, or the midwest the best pass takes care of some kind of funky ones like florida texas oklahoma kansas um, some of those outlier ones that don't participate easy pass takes care of probably 90 percent of all the toll roads and toll roads in the country um, so that the toll is paid digitally uh, as a company driver you do not pay tolls prime will pay take care of all the tolls for you as a lease operator you do pay tolls however as an easy pass customer you get a discount um, now trucks first of all pay more toll than cars so if you drive and you see tolls a dollar fifty that toll for a truck may be four dollars it may be five dollars it may be ten dollars there are some bridges I know of that are twenty dollars there are some bridge George Washington Bridge Last time I looked, I want to say it's $95 to go across the George Washington Bridge in a big truck. Um, so there are bridges that, you know, there's some, some, some of the bigger bridges that you're going to pay quite a bit to go over. Easy Pass gives Prime a bulk discount. So first of all, you usually get a pass or, or a discount for using Easy Pass instead of paying cash. Secondly, Prime gets a bulk discount because quite obviously, obviously when you've got 7,000 trucks, we use a lot of tolls and it just makes sense to say to a company, please use the Easy Pass system. You're not going to slow down all of the toll booths by putting 7,000 trucks. Now, not all 7,000 trucks are going to be at one toll booth at any given time, but we encourage you to use this system so that you can use the express tolling lanes or the you know open tolling or whatever it's called in your neck of the woods so prime gets a bulk discount for using that system instead of telling all their drivers just stop at the toll booth pay cash and we'll reimburse you later so if you're a lease operator you will pay if you go through uh, a toll road it will come out of your settlement uh, prime also does pay a small percentage of any toll that you incur um, as an example, for what I'm delivering today, they are paying $9.08 of whatever tolls that I incur. Now, it's up to me. If I can find a way to get here that's safe and legal, I'm not encouraging you to drive on non-truck routes, but if I can find a way to drive here that is not on a toll road, I'm still going to pay you that $9.08 because that's part of what they are billing the customer because this customer knows that you have to, for the most part, take toll roads to get here. Now, this is a place that's outside of Chicago and yeah, you could get here without paying tolls, but if you know anything about Chicago highways, there's not a ton of, not a ton of ways to get a lot of places without going on a toll road. So that's the two pieces, the best pass and the easy pass. The final uh, piece of technology was the pre-pass and those you might have seen if you've ever passed a way station um, and and these three last items I think are also probably um, three of those if you're looking for a company if you are a truck driver whether you're inexperienced whether you're experienced um, asking a company if they have toll paying pre-pass or easy pass best pass that sort of thing because it just speeds up your day so much. You don't have to waste time slowing down when you're on the interstate. A lot of these, you know, there's some toll roads that you still have to slow down and go five miles an hour, 10 miles an hour through a toll booth. Um, 
But if you can, it's so much nicer to not still have to stop, take a ticket, that whole deal. Um, so that's a big question if you are talking to a recruiter. Does your company have Easy Pass or Best Pass? Pre-pass to me is the number one question that I would ask a company. Does your company have pre-pass? You're going to accomplish two things asking that question. You're going to find out what their CSA score is. Now, their CSA score is a safety indicator. And a company cannot qualify to get pre-pass without having a good CSA score. If your company's CSA score is too low, you cannot qualify for pre-pass. And the reason for that is if you've ever driven past a way station, not every way station has pre-pass, but a lot of them do. You'll see those ones that say trucks follow in cab signals. If, it, if a way station is open, they will have arms that hang over the highway and they'll send a signal and get information back about what company you work for, all that sort of thing, and you will either get a green light with beeps or a red light with a different type of beep, indicating if you have to pull in to a way station or whether you can bypass that way station safely. So again, if your company doesn't have a good enough safety score, your company will not qualify for prepass. So the first question is, do you have prepass? If they say no, ask them if they have another type of way station bypass. If they don't, the odds are good that they do not qualify because of a lower CSA score, or maybe they're a smaller company. But you want to have a company that qualifies for that. Prime does qualify. They do have a good enough safety score. And that is a time-saving feature. And for what I do, I don't pass a ton of way stations. So it, those few times that I do pass an open way station to know there's not very good odds that I'm going to get pulled in. Now, I'm not concerned that I'm not going to weigh legal. I'm not concerned that I'm going to fail an inspection. That's not what I'm concerned about. That's not why I don't want to go into a way station. It's the time factor. It's the, okay, I'm legal. Um, I know I'm going to pass an inspection, but if they do flag me and say we want to do um, a level one, two, or three inspection, that's an extra half an hour, hour out of my time potentially, depending on um, how detailed an inspection they want to do. So that's a big time saver, and that's why that piece of technology, I think, is one of the bigger ones that you would ask a recruiter is, do you have or do you qualify for pre-pass or some sort of way station bypass? So that's what I have for technology. I didn't show you the Qualcomm. That's something that I think I could do an entire video on, so we'll save that for another day. Uh, but there's a lot of technology in these trucks. You're starting to see some of that adaptive cruise control, which is what the Bendix w uh, wingman system is. It's adaptive cruise control. Um, it will slow you down if you come up on a faster moving car. It warns you about a collision. Um, it will apply the brakes, that sort of thing. But you're starting to see that now in, in higher end vehicles. And, and that's anyone who's followed consumer automobiles knows that, you know, airbags were a luxury feature 20, 30 years ago, and now they're standard equipment, and that's, I think, what this will eventually be once the cost comes down, but they're standard in the vehicles that, that we drive. So I hope you enjoyed that. hope you found that interesting. Um, that's what I have for you this week. Thanks for watching. As always, click on the link in the description if you do want to come to Prime. It'll take you directly to an application, so you don't have to do a search for that. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask, uh, and I'll try to get to those in the comments below. Otherwise, we will talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. See you next time.